Well, hello and welcome to the special breakaway Super Bowl special here at TBUSA HQ. I'm John Root. Brian Farnsworth, my God, you look dapper. Yeah, uh, I showed up to gamble today, so <laughs> we're going to make some picks. And then also, too, we will tell you a little disclaimer. Uh, bet responsibly. <laughs> all right. And just like producer Angelo always says, if you got some big wins, make sure it's going to the offering plate and don't skip church in the morning because that is just a bad omen. All right, go to church in the morning, pray about some of these prop bets we're going to tell you about, and then go from there. You all right, Brian? <laughs> and we're just getting started. You're already laughing too much. Oh, we give terrible advice, don't we? <laughs> <laughs> well, the, I think the crazy part about this is we're going to give you a little uh, betting statistics. So we're being told that there's going to be a record almost 32 million people that are going to be betting on the Super Bowl. And I'm one 32 of 32 million. 32 million plan on betting and the American Gambling Association, you know how much money they think is going to be bet? Lay it on me. 7.6 billion, burp, like Joey B, with a B, will be wagered on Sunday. Hey, that's almost 10% of how much uh, is being offered for crack pipes, right? <laughs> Yeah, you'll be uh, you'll be able to afford those, and those are what those are free of charge now. <laughs> free, free of charge. <laughs> wow, thanks, thanks, Byron. Appreciate. It. I wonder wh who he's betting on. I'm not gonna say. I'm not gonna say, but he's definitely gonna bet on the team that I don't bet on. He's probably gonna say a team that's not even in the Super Bowl. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Brian Flores' team still in there? It's like no, no, he's he's nowhere to be found. But before we get into the Super Bowl stuff, I do want to touch on NFL honors. Oh, yes. Our guy, uh, Aaron Rodgers, most valuable unvaccinated player and the MVP. Which it shut me up because um, not many people remember this, but about eight weeks ago, I said that, you know, betting on Aaron Rodgers to win the MVP award was throwing money into the fire. I'm a big man. I'll tell you when I was wrong. Brian lies to you every once in a while. I was right. wrong. Absolutely wrong. And, you know, that quarter, full corduroy suit that he was wearing it looked like he was straight out of the set of, I don't know, Yellowstone or something. Oh, yeah. He looked good. That greasy hair. <laughs> My goodness. What a man. Also, too, I don't know if you saw a little bit. I came out with these MVVP t-shirts. Love them. Most viable unvaccinated players. So you can check those out. Um, go to johnnyrootswag.com. My God, what a website, right? You, you have, I can't believe that wasn't taken Johnnyrootswag.com. That's, yeah. that's your domain name. Yeah, I thought I'd start dressing the part soon. It's like, can't you feel that? Um, but another person. So the man of the year was um, Andrew Whitworth, Walter Payton, comeback player of the year. Joe Burrow, did you see he left the trophy no, on the I table? That. So he got comeback player of the year. He's like, so so happy to get this. Blah, blah, blah. Uh, he, he was just hanging out in, in L.A. Look. And then he's just like, I'm just happy about Sunday. And he walks away and he leaves the comeback player of the year trophy on the table. That's because he's not in it for comeback player of the year trophy. He's not Joey Cool for no reason. That's just that's just a lawn ornament for that guy. He is trying to win a Super Bowl this weekend. He has his mind on one thing and one thing only, and that is popping out a victory cigar after beating the Los Angeles is Rams. Is that a bet? There's got to be a bet about that. Well, like, it'd be minus 10,000 odds because I would we all know so. what it's going to do. What you should be able to not is bet on if he's going to pop out a cigar after winning. It's what brand of cigar is he going to pop out after winning? <laughs> because Or how many yeah. inches long is the cigar? Yeah, that's... That's not a bad call. What a weird bet that would be. How many inches long is this thing going to be? Uh, I don't know. This is this is time adult. to move on to another doesn't bet. Doesn't need to be adult content. All right. So right now, Rams are minus four. They are the favorite. So we're going to go off Fanduel right now. Yeah. M minus four. The over under is forty eight and a half. Uh, and then also to remember the Bengals, the Bengals, as I would say here, sports. One hundred and twenty five to one to go to the Super Bowl in the preseason. 2019, remember how many wins they had? Five. Two. Oh. oh, 2019, not 2020. 20, 2019, and then last year they had four. Four. Now they're going to the Super Bowl. That's the power of Joey B. Look, it, it's a have and have not league. You either need, you either have a franchise quarterback or you don't have a franchise quarterback. When you have one, you can go to the Super Bowl. That's why all these other bum organizations out there that can't ever figure out Browns how to get a, you know, how to get a franchise quarterback, you're never going to go anywhere. You need one. And the Cincinnati Bengals have it, and it's Joey Cool. Well, sometimes when you get a franchise quarterback and you're a fan of, of a team that, that gets to the Super Bowl, uh, you blow it. Shout out to the Falcons. <laughs> Thanks for that. 
That was really, really fun. Uh, but we'll start out with this. Rams minus four. I think I'm going to take Bengals at plus four. I'm going to do I think it's going to be a three-point game. Because okay. I'm not going to give you my final score prediction, but I think it's going to be within there. Yeah, I mean, if you know anything about me, John, and I like to think that you do. Uh, yeah, a little bit. I've, I've, been, I've been riding the Bengals for a little while now. Love Joe Burrow. You had them in your playoff bracket to I, go all the way, and we were calling this guy absolutely insane. I was like, "There's I was like, man, they'll, they'll, man, they might win a couple games, but going all the way." No. Yeah, no. So I have been I've all playoff long. I even understood. I'm a real, you know. I, I I love my I love my hometown teams. I love the Arizona Cardinals, but I'm a realist, and I am an honest man, and that's why I said Arizona Cardinals are not going far, and I picked the Cincinnati Bengals and Joe Burrow to go to the Super Bowl, not just go to the Super Bowl, but win the Super Bowl. And I'm going to com- continue to ride that high. You think they're going to win it? Absolutely. I understand why. So you why just, ba- you're just going to go straight Bengals money line. That's 100%. what we're talking about. No spread. I don't need the spread. All in. Pushing my chips in the middle of the table. All in. Like we're talking about all in. Like you're putting the house down. Well, I mean, I'm going to bet on other props and whatnot. Because we might you know, have to talk I, to I your brother about uh, that next paycheck. <laughs> <laughs> So sorry, sorry. I put all this money on uh, on the Bengals. I, I felt them. So and then, uh, can I get an advance on the next paycheck, Cheryl? This might be rough. <laughs> Look, you know you're a true degen- degenerate when you're gambling your rent money. So you know, I'm not going to do that. I think there's going to be a little home field advantage because this is the second Super Bowl in a row that the home team. Like the team that's in that area is hosting the Super Bowl. Last year we had the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Now you got the Rams who just won the NFC Championship game at their place. Rams house. Whose house? Rams house. NFL script writers are working overtime for this, you know. It had before last year with the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, it had never happened that the home, you know, the 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 where the Super Bowl was being played, that that team had won it. Now we have a chance for back to back years. Mm, mm, I don't know. I put my uh, tempo hat on for that one. Yeah, and I think right now too, it's, we're in HQ, so we're gonna start bringing some people on here. There's there's a lot of times you just you just hear from from us, and obviously you love hearing from us. But we're gonna bring in social media superstar, the social media guru, Brock Belcher, who is clearly a big Luka Doncic fan. He didn't hear that we had a uh, Super Bowl special. This wasn't about basketball. Did you, did you know this was about football? You know, you guys were talking mad <laughs> yesterday. <laughs> Am I allowed to cuss? Dude, I, believe I can't it. believe I'm you jump to. on our show. <laughs> Have you ever heard us cuss, Brock? Um, so I had to rep my guy, 51 points last night. So Career high, yeah. It's yeah, not as high yeah. as 70 points. but All you know, right, that's, blah, that's blah, okay. blah, 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 blah. What we want to hear from you, Brock Belcher, is who's going to be the Super Bowl MVP. All right? Super Bowl, Super Bowl MVP. MVP. Right now, you want me to give you the favorites? Yes. So clearly the favorite right now is going to be Matt Stafford because the Rams are favored, and then the majority of the time, I feel like there's – Going to be a little bit more of a favor with the quarterback, quarterback of the team bias. that's favored. The second best odds is Joey Burrow. Joey Burrow. And then you got Cooper Cup, the Offensive Player of the Year. If you watched the NFL Honor Show the other day, you probably shouldn't have because it was another award show and those are kind of garbage. Is there a, When's the last time a white guy's won NFL Super Bowl MVP besides Tom Brady? Ooh, that's a, that's a very, very good question. Julian Edelman. Julian Edelman is actually the okay. Last how about one. a non-patriot? That was a f- <laughs> non-patriot. What like white people on the Patriots? <laughs> Only count. white people play for the Patriots. <laughs> yeah, because let's give you the uh, the last five. So Tom, uh, well, Tom Brady won. Well, so besides Tom, Tom, besides Tom. Brady. Yeah, other yeah, other than Tom Brady, Brady, and then you got Patrick Mahomes, and then Julian Edelman. Was so half Super half Bowls of ago. Patrick Mahomes. Guess who was before that? Big Nick, and see, I can censor myself. <laughs> Nick Foles from Philly. And then Tom Brady won before, and wow. then guess, so who, guess only, who was before that? Only white guys win Super Bowl MVP. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Just like NFL honors. <laughs> they, they get all the big awards, too. Yeah. Von, wait, uh, just turning back the clock, you're a big uh, Cam Newton fan. Did Von Miller win Super Bowl MVP that year? He did. That's probably the last defensive player to win I, Super Bowl MVP. I have a burning hatred <laughs> for Von Miller. So if Von Miller somehow See, Von watches Miller, this. Von Miller's current odds are plus 3,900. Yeah. Okay, so here's how it's going to go. Super Bowl is always wonky, right? Of course, I feel like quarterbacks win it every year. The Bengals' offensive line is f***ing garbage. You're going to have to bleep that. <laughs> Definitely going to have to bleep did that. that. Dude, I can't Donald. believe you roll on this show and he's got already just cussing twice. Aaron this Donald. This guy's got absolutely no filter. Aaron Donald is going to annihilate this game. 
single-handedly. I love that. They're going to rush for the entire game. He's going to have three sacks, one forced fumble, and possibly a recovered touchdown. Because they're going to recovered touchdown? on Joe Burrow. But here I go. If it's not Aaron Donald, it will be somebody at a skills position that's not quarterback. Like Cooper Cup or a wide receiver. I Jamar Chase. If the Bengals win it, which the Bengals, I think it's going to be a blowout. I think the Rams are blowing them out. Well, and so Aaron Donald is right now plus 1,400. So, I mean, you do, if you feel really, really confident about yep. that, you can win yourself some money. Like, also, too, we got to remember, like, we're always going to go back to that Tennessee Titans versus Cincinnati Bengals oh. game. That divisional round. He got sacked nine times. Yeah. And then you're playing against one of the best defensive lines in Bro. football. Dude, if he gets it, because how many sacks did, uh, let's see, Von Miller, had, he had six tackles, two and a half sacks, sackles. and one pass deflected. Sackles. Did how I say sackles? sackles? Did, he have? Sackles. did I say sackles? See, I, this is what happens when I have someone jump on a chair and start cussing all over the place. Von Miller would I, get sackles. So six, six <laughs> sackles. You haven't heard about that? That's another prop bet. So it's a tackle and a sack. How many sackles? What's the over under? Six tackles, two and a half sacks, and one pass deflected. Is that last week? That was Von Miller. I'm talking about when he won the MVP. Oh, when he won Super Bowl. Oh, oh, dude, we got Michael Hulk in the house. Back on Stephen Davis. What's all right? I'm not Joey Chestnut. What's going on here? All right, all right. All right. Mm-hmm. I know. Can we, get, can we get ketchup here? We're good. That's all we no, got. Is dude must- mustard only. I know. Mustard is this the is the I know. Like, I know for a fact. Out. I know for a fact he didn't cook these because if he did, it would not be hot dogs. It would have been fried chicken. This is very true. <laughs> he has a point. Now I'm gonna need this, this seat, sir. This guy this is my comes game. in here cussing, and then he's saying some of the most racy stuff. <laughs> my goodness, unhinged, <On> <laughs> dude. You got. Um, actually, can you take over? It's, yeah, I will take. It's, I will it's take your. This. It's your month. Tell him what you want to do. It's your you month. month. <laughs> you can have my right. seat. You Sorry, will sir. Rise. Yeah, get out of here, bro. Do we yes, really indeed. not have any ketchup at all. I have to eat this with just mustard. Why do you need ketchup? Because mustard sucks. No, mustard. You're a terrible person. What is this guy talking about right now? Who are these guests? They come in here, they start cussing, and they're attacking me. Well, got the uh, sunglasses memo. See? Yeah. Of course. Of course. Thank you. indeed. Come prepare. Mm -hmm. Thank you for bringing food, but I would have liked some ketchup. (laughs) Now, Steven, you're from California, right? Yes, sir. Now, okay, so you've got the Rams, but I don't know. Rams left you guys a long time ago. I don't know if you still love the Rams. What's your feeling on this week's weekend's game? See, I'm more of an underdog kind of guy. Okay. So usually I would go for the Cincinnati. You know, usually I'll go, right. I'll go, 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 go for the Cincinnati. Cincinnati. But, but I am an LA guy. So huh? I'm a little conflicted right now. I don't know. Maybe I will go for Cincinnati. I think I'll do that. Yeah. Big what Joe Burrow fan? Want, um, no. I think <laughs> <laughs> Not at all. I uh, want to see the underdog win. The real question is, um, I think you were at Skid Row a couple days ago, right? Indeed I was. Um, who, who are they putting their bets on? <laughs> <laughs> well, it's safe to say they do not care. Actually, they're not uh, for L.A. too much, if you ask me, especially being relocated. Raiders fans probably, huh? Definitely Raiders yeah. fans. Old school. Which is actually, you know. Are they, uh, handing out, are they handing out like free bets in Skid Row? It's like, here's your crack pipe. Also, here's about 50 <laughs> bucks to FanDuel. <laughs> For some reason, this guy's got an iPhone, so throw 50 yeah, bucks. Yeah, get, 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 <laughs> put a little money on his card, on his phone there. It's unbelievable. They're, they're, it is absolutely clean in L.A. right now. It, it the, the pathway from the airport all the way to the stadium, it is free and clear. First time in decades. First time in decades, indeed. And it's actually interesting to hear the different opinions from the people there. Mm. Unbelievable. Good nope. time. You're a California boy. Mm-hmm. So what I want to hear... Uh, right now is there's fun prop bets. Mm. Also, we're going to be speaking with food in our mouth a lot this show, I guess. Mm-hmm. Um, halftime show. Mm. You got Dr. Dre, Eminem, wow. Mary J. Blige, wow. and more. One of the best prop bets that, that I've seen is, is a couple things. Mm. What's going to be the first song that's sung at the halftime show? California on- Love. So you yeah, think California? Because yeah. right, because right now knows how to party. Uh, <laughs> California knows, knows how, how to party. party. Yeah, Gavin Newsom, I freaking hate you. Uh, Governor Gavin Newsom. Sorry, yeah. sorry, sorry. Five one, five one, five one, C three, five one, one, C three. Um, plus two hundred odds that California Love will be the first song sung on stage at the halftime show. Um. Which, which makes sense. But what I want to know is like, 
do they come out hot right away? You have to. Yeah, dude, you got to get the crowd pumped. Yes, indeed. Guns are blazing. Do you think they're going to be kind of like, remember Justin Timberlake? Where like all of a sudden he's just like in the sands. That's everywhere? what you remember about that Super Bowl <laughs> halftime show? There's a lot of things no, I remember. No, the, not the new that. one. The new one. Not like when he, not the back, not the old one. I'm talking about the new one. All right. I'm not talking about basically, you know what? You know who is probably excited about that? Adidas. So what they just do with their new uh, sports bra line? Mm. No, I they're didn't. not really showing off a lot of sports bras. That's <laughs> that's what that's what I'll say right now. No kidding, huh? <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, we do remember the old uh, Justin Timberlake. Mm. Uh, Can't keep my hands to myself. Um, but another thing, uh, voice. the second most popular bet at plus three seventy five is the next episode. One of Dr. Dre's best. This is indeed very a very good pick. Yep. That's a good pick. Mm -hmm. How do you? That's an icon. It's an iconic song. It's an iconic I beginning. I can't believe I'm gonna eat another one. All of them. Eat them all. Yeah. Johnny Chestnut. Let's go. <laughs> Put how them many? Down. How many of those do you think you could eat in a minute? Yeah, there you go. Out of boy. You got some water there too. Why don't you soak it a little bit? Oh man. Yeah, I'm, I'm kind of struggling right now. I, this is a little. Another dry. great prop bet. This is from. These are both from OddsShark.com. Will Snoop Dogg smoke on stage? <laughs> It's at plus 300 right now. Duh. <laughs> Dude, but if it's plus 300, like, that's a that's pretty good. It's pretty good. 10 odds. bucks wins you 30 bucks, yeah. you know? My, just a little, little something something down something, on something, that. Something, yeah, why will you, not? Will you yeah, throw you a 10-piece down on that? I'll do that. It's easy. Yeah, I, that's he's, easy right he's there. Got, he's got to light up. It's, 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 it's California. It's pretty legal over there now, so, you know, mm. why not? <laughs> My goodness. Well, that's what say. Hey, 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 hey. Well, that's what you can Smoke do now. It's like day. if you don't have to wear a mask, you can either smoke or you can hold your breath. What if they just had L.A. Mayor Garcetti out there on stage just holding his breath for as long as possible? He can hold his breath a long time. I bet he could rip him. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, how do you? I guess Imagine. you can smoke and hold your breath. Yeah. Yeah. It's a process. Trust the I guess so. I guess so. Mm. Um, what we want to know, though, mm. what's your final score prediction? You know what? I'm a fan of college football. So I like the high score game. So I'm going to say. <laughs> you just like games where the defense. Whoa, you know <laughs> coming out of the gun, <laughs> gun hot. <laughs> I'm going in hot, baby. 56. Let's say it's a nail biter. To 53. <laughs> Mm. Dude, the over under <laughs> is gonna be hit by one team. The over is just gonna be hit. Because right now, what the over under is 48 and a half. <laughs> he says 56. See, that's my mic drop moment. I'm done with y'all. I have no more hot dog to eat. All right. Thanks for I am out. Thanks for bringing the hot dogs. I appreciate it. Uh, What's the highest? 56. Now I'm taking these with me. All right. The highest yeah. combined score is 75 in the Super Bowl. So, Stephen Davis is predicting history here. <laughs> 56 points on one 56, side. 56, 53. What, what is that? 109 combined points. That's actually out of control. Don't, don't bet that. We, we open this up by saying bet responsibly. That is not responsible. That is the absolute opposite of responsible. I think going back to uh, Brock, it was funny because obviously we were talking about Super Bowl MVP. And the last number one overall pick to win Super Bowl MVP was Eli Manning in 04. And then- It was the last number one overall pick to win it? Yeah, <laughs> that was the last number one overall pick. And then now you got Stafford and Burrow. If any of them win, they're both number one picks. My goodness, look at who we have. the guys that know a lot about football, is that right? <laughs> we Big pretend football to. guys we pretend here. to. Yeah. You look like Joe Burrow a little bit. Hey, let's go. You got the whole thing. You, you, need, you need the silver yeah. chain, yeah? I don't make enough money and to, a to have trophy. that chain. Ladies and gentlemen, Charlie Kirk. How are well, we doing? Sorry, uh, Stephen took the hot dogs. We had some hot dogs. Is that right? Yeah. Are you a mustard guy? I'm definitely a mustard on hot dog guy. Like you cannot you. put ketchup on hot dogs. Thank oh, you. My. I grew up in Chicago, okay? You get arrested for that. <laughs> I'm not kidding. Well, I, mean, I don't you think You can shoot as many people as you want in <laughs> Chicago, but if you put ketchup on a hot dog, it is a felony. I can't. I might have to go out there and do that. Just run through the streets of Chicago and just like douse catch, ketchup all over hot dogs. Get arrested. See if I can just. It would be like 1917. You know that scene where he's running, he's trying not to get shot. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> they they, they like, did that whole movie in like two two cuts. It's crazy. Yeah, incredible. I love. I love that. But hey, we're t we're talking we're talking football, Charlie. I I know I've a little heard, bit about I've heard, football. I've heard you're getting back into it just a tiny yeah, bit. Yeah, I know. I, I I'm take. I'm just tolerating the, the <laughs> slight wokeism. It's not as bad. It wasn't as bad this year. 
But when you got they people like job. Joey Burrow, you have to get back into the sport because he's incredible. I'm a big Burrow fan. I, I loved him in college. He's terrific. Incredible. Well, and so uh, right now, Rams are the favorite to win. They're at home. They have a better defense, way better D-line than the Bengals have O-line. Do you have the Bengals taking this? So who I want to win is the Bengals for sure. Look, I, I think Joe Burrow's like Kemba Walker, where it's like you just get like super hot and the whole team just starts to like play way better than they actually are. It, I mean, it's a phenomenon in sports. The question is, is it going to continue, mm -hmm. right? And the bright lights could work either way. Like, I mean, look, the Rams are not prone to stall, right? I mean, they just, the, the Bucks game, they just decided to stop playing football for like a half. Yeah, exactly. And they're like, oh, by like the way, we're like... We have to win the game. There's the aura of Tom Brady, though. I feel like anytime a team has a big lead, for some reason, like he's got to put a trance on people where it's like, oh, you're comfortable. That's exactly right. Change it up. Go, go like, conservative it was, it was with like the play 28 calling. to three or something again. Oh, God. So, we look, have to bring that up. Look, the uh, <laughs> the Bengals offensive line are like the, you know, they're like turn, turnstiles at, a, at an event. It's just like, come on in, like do whatever you want. I think it's like the most sacks per snap ever in the history of NFL football. <laughs> it's kind of like the southern border, right? That's how yeah, I see Yeah, that's right. <laughs> I think that's exactly right. Like, just come on in. You know, whoever it's, you want. It's more of a symbolic border than anything. I think that's exact. I mean, and Aaron Donald is like a freak of nature uh, in more ways than one. But look, I mean, the Bengals have a magic and you can't discount that in sports. I mean, in the NFL, you have a couple standout players that get paid a lot. Quarterbacks and defensive linemen get paid more than any other positions. Defensive back for a, th a third. And there's a reason for that. Mm -hmm. Those are the game wreckers of the game makers. And then the rest of the positions, the rest of like the skill players, they're basically one-to-ones, right? Yeah. So, I mean, I'd put Chase up against OBJ any day. I know that's like heresy, but I think I think he's going to be a better football player. And, and, and I, I don't know if he's there yet, but the, it doesn't matter. The point is that it, it matters who's actually going to play better. Mm -hmm. And that's the issue, right? Is on paper, yeah, the Rams look like a much better team. They're at home, but there's a lot of pressure, right? I mean, you got like Leonardo DiCaprio there. Yeah. That's like a big deal, I guess. <laughs> or Gavin Newsom without a mask. Um, so look, I like the Bengals to win. And I think they're going to mm -hmm. get down early. I think they're going to get down like 14 to 3. And then I think Burrow's just going to scrap. Right where he's comfortable, right? Yeah, that's down exactly a couple scores. Right. Joe Cool, right? You think it's going to be like the AFC Championship game then? Where well, it's that, like was even, one, that was even more insane. That was that was nuts. I mean, they went Mahomes down. just like went to Cabo and came back. I was like, oh, we are still playing football. He had like a 94 QBR in the first half and then like a 1.4 in the second half. Was oh, it yeah. really like, 1.4? It, it, it was like, awful. It's almost like you should have just thrown Blake Bortles out there for the second yeah, half. I looked like they like threw his brother out there. <laughs> okay. We're not bringing Blake Bortles back. One thing we've been talking we about is... Jags fans <laughs> throwing stuff at us. Jags fans, I, we are praying for you people. That was one that, of the most that, amazing that, games. Brady, Jags, what was that, four or five years ago? It was one of the most Oh, and it, Jags were up by two scores they going into robbed. the fourth. I, that's, that's a typical Brady deal. <laughs> we've yeah. been talking about some prop bets, though, Charlie, is we were asking Stephen Davis what he thought about the halftime show. It's like there's prop bets for the first song that's going to get sung. Um, will Snoop Dogg smoke on stage? Like there's some wo wonky, wonky bets. Show me some of the bets. What do you got, Brian? Well, so one of my favorite is uh, who is the first person that the Super Bowl MVP is going to thank in their acceptance speech? <laughs> and you've got the city and the fans at plus 325. You've got God at 370, his family at 690, and the coaches at 1200. Well, it depends who wins the Super Bowl. Exactly. If it's Cooper Cup, God, I think, is going to come right oh, yeah. out of the gate, right? If it's I don't know. His, his, his uh, wife, though, who she supported him while he was trying to still make it as a, as a college player, it was his fiance that supported him and got him... He almost quit, but yeah, she he, said, keep playing. And he was an FCS him. player, right? Mm -hmm, probably mm -hmm. the best FCS player. It was Eastern oh, yeah. Washington. Eastern Washington. Yep. Yeah, he's the best FCS player probably ever. Yeah. And that says something. Randy mm -hmm. Moss. No, no, it was not Randy Moss. It was one of those other, either T Terrell Owens or somebody was an FCS player or something. Tyreek Hill was FCS too. He played for like Western Alabama Community College or something. <laughs> yeah, he, he had some off of, well, I think we know issues. why that's the case. He, got, he, had, he had some character issues. <laughs> got Couple flaws. Oklahoma State University yeah. or something with uh, Gundy, <laughs> but he is a man. He's no longer forty. But uh, Dude, I, actually, I think Jerry Rice. Was no, that's actually, right. Yeah, yeah, it was Jerry yeah. Rice. That's it was right. I just guys, looked yeah. it up. I was like, I'm pretty sure that's no, who it is. Moss went to Marshall or something. Yep. Yeah. yeah, that's right. That's is that's almost FCS, right? I'm not sure. Yeah, back then they were a little. They were taken a little more seriously, but yeah, Brian Leftwich went to Marshall too. One of the great college football games ever.
Remember really? Brian Leftwich? Oh yeah, he's, he's uh, the he's offensive on coordinator the... for the Buccaneers. Yep, exactly. Yeah, exactly. He's a stud. So yeah, I like Joe Burrow. I think he's going to win. I think it's all attitude at this level. I think that's why Brady wins so much. Mm -hmm. It gets to the point where you kind of get into a headlock of talent, right? Where it's like, okay, we're we all run four two nines, like you know, we all know kind of each other's playbook. Mm -hmm. There's so much pressure, and it's going to come down to who has as cool as ice. And I hate to say it, it's not Matthew Stafford. It's not. Like Matthew Stafford has the skill set, yep. but he hasn't exactly been known for tight spaces and tight times, right? So I think Matthew Stafford throws a pick in the fourth quarter and Joe Burrow goes down and wins the game. Man, that, that would be tough. Good. That would be like basically what, like week seven through 12, Matthew Stafford? <laughs> oh, yeah. Because yeah. that was, he had a hot start. I think after week six, I forget who, I think I said it was going to be Titans Rams Super Bowl. I'm pretty sure that's what I was saying in, in week six. But I don't know. Matt Stafford's been rolling. And I feel like he's just Super got Bowls that. Super Bowls are weird things, man. They're tricky. Especially when Sean McVay is coaching. You remember the last time they that, were in the, the Super the Bowl? The bodybuilder that calls himself a football coach? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, well, Matthew Stafford, a lot of people don't, don't mention this. He led the league this season in interceptions. The guy's great, don't get me wrong. Yeah. But when it comes down to it, you know, pedal to the metal – he's going to make some some mistakes. And that's why yeah. I, I, I lean with Charlie here. Of I think he's going to screw up, and I do not expect Joe Burrow to screw up. Yeah, and I, I mean, look, Burrow's not infallible, but he's playing at a level that we've all seen what that looks like, right? That's why I use like the Kemba Walker thing, where I think UConn was like an eight seed. And in March, it was like 2015 or 16, mm -hmm. or like 14. You remember that, where they just yeah. like yeah. ran the table? Mm -hmm. And that's why, you know, in March Madness or in college football to a lesser extent because it's so it's there's so much preference is on the regular season but these tournament styles it's just the hot hand it's the hot team so yeah I mean but look the x factor is whether or not you know the the Bengals are going to actually field an offensive line right that that's <laughs> yeah. going to be the x factor so but they've also proven I know we were talking about this a little bit earlier they can win while Joey B gets sacked like there was nine sacks, nine in sacks that, against the Titans in that Titans unreal. game obviously you had Ryan Tannehill quarterback and I think he's an Aggie, out, of, right? out of the out of the field yeah. yeah out of the entire field he was the worst quarterback in the playoffs in my opinion a lot some people like saying Jimmy G but Jimmy G found a way hey, to hey. to win games hey. <laughs> he didn't I, I, I will, I will defend that. Jimmy G okay. I will I will always defend Jimmy G as well uh, another one we have for you coin toss it's gonna be heads or tails because get this tails has hit 53 percent of the time in the past 55 games well, that's kind of weird. Um, I, yeah. I, I mean, that's strange. I don't know if that sways you at all, trend, Charlie. I, I, I mean, but okay, this is that's a that's a total lot. Just so we understand, okay? If you, in the, I, I had I had some rocket scientist. I use it, you know, really sarcastically with me once in <laughs> Vegas, and he's like, "Oh, the last nine times it was red on roulette. The next one's gonna be black." I'm like, "Do you think the ball <laughs> knows the last nine times? <laughs> Every time it's an independent 50-50 chance." He's like, oh no, I've never seen it ten in a row. It doesn't matter. Each one's an ind it's an individual yeah. thing. Mm -hmm. It has no bearing on the prior one. It's not like, oh, the coin's gonna try to even it out now. No, it's a 50-50 chance every time. Ladies and gentlemen, that's when you know you've met a degenerate gambler. Yeah. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> Some guy that's literally just been smoking in there for the that's past right. 35 and years. It the got the slot. next one was the tenth. It's like it just doesn't. That's not the way the laws of nature work. So who do I think is going to win the coin toss? I have no idea. <laughs> yeah, I'm mean, better than that. Obviously, what a lot of betters love to focus on is the first touchdown score. That's right. Yep. Who do I, you think? I think the Rams could probably score first. Okay, so uh, obviously the odds on favorite then would be Cooper Cup. Do you think anybody else, an OBJ or maybe Cam Akers, the running back? Yeah, or maybe like a Matthew Stafford sneak. I mean, he, I, something like bizarre like that. Look, I think the Super Bowl is going to have some unexpected stuff. You might see a safety. Yeah. You might see a pick six. Mm -hmm. You got two teams that, uh, one that is a showy team, which is the Rams. They do all these weird, goofy trick plays at times. Yeah. And then you got the Bengals that they're going to come out with reckless abandon, right? And w the Bengals will win the game if they come out as if this is like an AFC play-in game. They will lose if all of a sudden they're like trying to manage the you know the the game and yeah. they're super careful. And because in the Super Bowl, look, this is why Brady won so many. He also lost a few. It's the team that plays looser that usually wins, right? It, Super Bowls are rarely ever blowouts. They're rarely. They come down to third mm -hmm. or fourth quarter, and we thought the Falcons-Patriots were going to be a blowout, and it kind of tightened up, right? Still lose and, over them. Yeah, and look, it's a long... You have to realize the Super Bowls are it's one of the longest football games. It's like a five-and-a-half-hour thing, oh right? Gosh. And so it, it, you, you, someone who can really slow the game down like mm -hmm. Joe Burrow, that's why... 
when I saw Joe Pro Burrow play at LSU, I turned to my dad. I'm like, that's Tom Brady. Like, it's the it is the best quarterback I've ever seen. And the game becomes slower as the game progresses, right? With Matthew Stafford, I'm not so confident. And that's, I'm not trying to bash him. He could win. I mean, he has such talent at his disposal. Um, but yeah, I mean, so first score, I mean, I, 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 I think I think the Rams are going to come off to a really quick start. Okay. Well, and you you mentioned like, yeah, we've seen some goofy stuff. Rams like to play a lot of trick plays. Uh, and that made me think right now it's plus 1,400 for any non-quarterback to throw a, throw a touchdown pass. And what it makes me Philly think Philly special. Is Philly special style, exactly. Yeah, that's right. OBJ has two touchdown uh, passes in his career. That's what I, I'm going to throw a little money on that because I fully believe a Philly special type thing will happen where OBJ is going to be throwing the ball. Yeah, or, or Jamar Chase or something, right? Exactly. Yeah. Dude, that's why I think the Rams, like, they feel comfortable in their house. That's why I think I'd give that's them a, a little bit more of an edge. Too, by the way. Is, wow, gosh, it's beautiful. It's, SoFi is incredible. Have you got, been there? I got mm-hmm. to go a couple times wow. this season. Uh, it's crazy they let me in, right? Yeah. <laughs> but, but it's a, it's a beautiful stadium because um, – a couple of my buddies actually are on the team. JJ Koski's on. Uh, he got elevated from the practice squad. And then wow. my long snapper in college just had him on the podcast. If you guys haven't checked that out, make sure you do that. Matt Orzek. He was my long snapper at Azusa Pacific. So, I mean. So you're I think, torn here. I mean, I know you love I love you know you love Joey B, but you've got some got some buddies on the team. Got some buddies on the team, and I think they just feel good. You talk about the team that's gonna be looser. Like, how can you not feel loose when you are going to be at your home stadium? Uh, I, th- I think of it opposite. I think Same. it's a lot of pressure. It's a lot of friends and family. It's going to be 90% Rams fans. And if, like, things start going not so well, that place will be silent, man. Mm-hmm. And that's pressure. The thing is, and it, it, it works, I think, sep- opposite. This is why so many road teams win in NFL playoff games. Is like, when you start not doing so well, that silence is harder to deal with than the noise at Arrowhead. Because mm-hmm. you're everyone's like, all right come on mm-hmm. you're like come on you know what i mean it's kind of oh, like yeah. they want to cheer but they can't so i don't know and plus they're gonna have all this like here's the thing is like how mentally disciplined will stafford and all them be they mm-hmm. got the celebrity culture they got you know every star is gonna be there they're gonna have like the la laker feel right yeah they're like jack nicholas like standing up and yep. complaining at halftime right i don't know I, I i think that the bank from cincinnati of all places <laughs> right they haven't they haven't been in a super bowl since boomer esiason yep and they're also playing for Harambe. So that's what we're being told. <laughs> was Harambe so, killed at the Cincinnati Jews? Yeah. Yep. Right? Yeah. So, I mean, you talk about, like I said, I there's no a little idea. bit of an edge for the Rams. Um, when the uh, linebacker for the Bengals went on part of my take, he did say they're playing for Harambe. So it's it's tough. How was the uh, Super Bowl edge. press day? I didn't, see, I didn't see much come out of it. They still do that where they ask them all those wild questions? Yeah, I thought it was like, are they okay. are they cooling it down a little bit? They are. It used to be super aggressive. Well, and and they've taken it really from one day, and it's kind of spread out over the whole week. Oh, to maximize okay. Air time. It was such a circus, though. Mm-hmm. It used to be awesome. Like they'd yeah. ask him about everything. I guess not so much. That's why like, I think if we go back to the Brady conversation, yeah. where he always did such a great job in those, like that viral video talking about how much he loved his dad and how much his dad meant to him, like yeah. to get to this point, there was like a little like kid reporter that asked him that, like, "Who's your role model?" Like little things like that. I don't think we didn't see that this year, but it was yeah, all I, I it was all about like Joe Burrow. Like you got to wear a fur coat when you show up, or <laughs> it's like yeah, his star is looming over everybody at this point. It's almost darkening the the, the light on everybody else is because he. I mean, he's a, the fastest rising superstar I think I've ever seen. In yeah, I um I haven't been watching the media coverage. That's interesting, yeah. but yeah, I think I think Joe can handle it. I I mean, mm-hmm. look, he. What he did at LSU was unbelievable. Mm-hmm. I mean, they they ran the table. He won the Heisman, and they didn't just win that national championship. They destroyed Clemson. Like oh, yeah. it was yeah. it was a highway robbery. He, the game was over by the third quarter. Right? Trevor Lawrence has never recovered. Clearly, yeah. I think I, 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 I think Trevor's got to get a haircut, and he's <laughs> got to get a new quarterback coach. He has the raw talent. Yeah, yeah. I mean, he's for he's played for the Jaguars, though. I mean, come on. So. So, yeah. Charlie, where are you going to be watching the game? Like, what's going down? What do you have? Undisclosed uh, what's on the, location. What's on the Yeah, it's an platter? undisclosed location. It won't be in Central Scottsdale because they have the Satan Conference going on. It's kind of oh. weird. Um, <laughs> You're not going to invite any of them over? N- no. no <laughs> it's kind of be weird. Uh, so I don't want to leave the house. I don't get hexed. So um, I'm just going to kind of watch it at home at an undisclosed location. <laughs> and um, I actually I love the Super Bowl. I always I always have. Uh, I just lo- I actually love the commercials. I love the over the top drama. I'm gonna be boycotting the halftime show because I can't stand all those <laughs> numbskulls. Um, and then, but no, I just I just I love. It's like so uniquely American, which is yeah. what I love about it. Yeah. And like the whole world watches because it's kind of like a spectacle, kind of like how we justify watching curling. 
right? Which is like a bunch of janitors, you know, like, you know, floating marbles across ice, which we otherwise wouldn't do, right? Yeah. So, but I, I just, I love the Super Bowl. Oh, yeah. It's, You're yeah, going to be at a Super Bowl be... party, right? What's that? You're going to be at a Super Bowl party, I'm right? I'm going to be at a Super Bowl party. I'm going to be hanging out with Harrison Butker and a few other guys from the Chiefs out in New York, wow. actually. So, I'm... I'm not a, like, Super Bowl party guy, because then I have to, like, explain football to other people, <laughs> and it's just, yeah, I don't have time for this. Like, I'm watching the game. Okay. That's why you got to be exclusively inviting people where it's just like please tell me what your sports knowledge is that's right what's and your if, sports iq <laughs> you got to take a survey first so i actually know i can invite you to that's this right. thing and then it's like yeah sure you can bring a plus one but like you know if that that other person you bring keep the like, talking to them <laughs> right <laughs> do you have questions go outside and ask that's right okay or ask that's siri right? <laughs> yeah got what a is a field goal <laughs> how many um, how many points is a touch goal what's uh what's the final score gonna be charlie so you want my over under or do you want uh well right now the over under is 48 and a half so look if you want if you want my prediction of how the flow of the game is again i could be so wrong with this i think it's going to be like a flashy start right Mm -hmm. i think for the rams yeah and then i think it's going to slow down i think the game's going to slow down super bowls have a tendency to do this um my prediction is 31 28 Bengals. Ooh, close game i kind of almost seems like that could be a field goal maybe mcpherson is the one who closes it out again what a rookie year he's had. You know, Sheesh. like at what he said, hey, uh, we're going to go to the... Looks like we're going a- to the AFC Championship. <laughs> I would love to hear him say, well, looks like we're going to Disneyland right before he kicks. <laughs> they got to mic that guy up, right? Yeah, they got to yeah. mic him up. Yeah, that would be absolutely amazing. Another guy that has a great faith, too. So for some reason, he boots like five field goals. So he could be the MVP and he'll bring up God first, probably. Who's the if they're booting the five field goals, I don't think they're. I don't think field Bengals are going to win. Gay. Oh, for the Rams? Okay. Yeah. Yeah, he's all right. Not bad. Like, he, yeah, he's a good kicker. Like, good but... back. Yeah. Yeah. But no, expect a lot of field goals. That's the Super Bowls usually have a lot of field goals. Because, mm-hmm. I mean, again, players get really tight in the Super Bowl. It's weird. Mm-hmm. You have players that play super well, and all of a sudden they just kind of slow down and they just kind of choke a little bit. So um, I think that benefits the Bengals. Dude, that's why I think it's probably a good call when you say there's so much pressure on the Rams. Like, it's been their all in year. They got Matt Stafford. Yep. He's never been here before. He just got stuck in Detroit. I do agree there's extra pressure there. Someone like Aaron Donald, he definitely wants to be a He's Super Bowl champion. Super Bowl champion, right? Uh, no. Never been a Super Bowl Even champion. Even Sue, right? Um, no, Sue was on the Bucks. He was there last year. Mm-hmm. Oh, that's right. They have another really good defensive lineman, though, if I'm not mistaken. They got they, they traded for Von Miller. Oh, um, he was a Super Bowl MVP. Yeah. 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 He was the one who beat Cam Newton. Wow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sure. That, was Pey- that was Peyton's last, last game, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. Yep. Well, and they got Jalen Ramsey, who a lot of people – you know, tag uh, Ramsey as the best corner in football. I think he's a little overrated, though, because he gets really in his head. He likes to talk a lot of crap with people. And then you end up seeing him get burnt by guys. So they, they've they talked about Jalen Ramsey might be on Jamar Chase basically the whole game. I, I'm calling Jamar. Yeah. I think Jamar is going to cook him. Jamar is going to be one of the best receivers in the NFL. I mean, the fact they've already established, they reestablished that duo from college is one of the coolest stories. So I've great. Seen. And he just won offensive, uh, rookie offensive player of the well, year. He deserves it. I mean, yeah, oh, yeah. I mean, the guy's incredible. That's why I think there's going to be times where Jalen Ramsey gets the best of him. But I think overall, I think, you know, Jamar Chase is going to take the cake. But just think about who those backup receivers are, though. Obviously, you got a, got a great tight end over there in Cincinnati. T. Higgins going to be able to do his thing. But they just don't have as many weapons. Uh, on the outside as the, the, the Rams do because they're going to probably try to make sure that safety over the top is taking care of Cooper Cup. That's why I think it's going to leave some openings for OBJ. That's why I say OBJ, if we're talking about any time touchdown score, I am easily putting money down. So X Factor, Hubbard. Keep an eye on him. I'm telling you. I like him a lot. I loved him in college. That guy's a stud. Yep. He's going to have a big game. I'm telling you. You heard it here first. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But I mean, yeah, he's an Ohio State guy, so he's playing that's, for That's what I love. You got all state. these like, Ohio guys. Yeah. It's so cool. It's like they're all playing for like the home team mm-hmm. that has been awful for years. <laughs> I mean, like if you're cheering against the Bengals, it's like you're either like Matthew Stafford's wife or there's something really wrong with you. <laughs> it's like the greatest story ever. It's freaking Cincinnati, okay? Yeah. And everybody hates L.A. You know why? If, if I know. From Seriously, L.A, yeah, I know. everybody hates it. But also, see, there's an aspect of like you want to root for both these guys at quarterback. Yeah, like, Stafford's I, a likable guy. I guess He's that. a very likable guy, and he's easily one of the toughest quarterbacks. I think that, he's, that I think, I think he's a, a good time. guy. I agree with you. So, I mean, there's so many. That's what I love about this Super Bowl. I just like, what's the who's the villain? 
right now who what Jalen Ramsey's just the only villain probably Jalen Ramsey but I mean, in general I mean, he's like, just like second fiddle to everybody else that's there but also like the the city of LA is always a villain they're showy they're yeah. flashy I know I think back to the Showtime Lakers and it's like yeah they they are better than you or the USC yeah. Trojans when they were just incredible Pete Carroll, with yeah. yeah Pete Carroll like like Reggie they have Bush, been so good for so long that they have crushed so many smaller market teams that you have you have people around the country that just go no Screw LA. I know. Go it, Bengals. It, it, it literally is the small town versus the big town. Mm -hmm. It is. I would love to see the people of St. Louis right now. Like, are they just like all going <laughs> going hard for the Bengals right now? Do they just they got have... so burned, man? Yeah. yeah. I mean, San Diego got burned too. Just think about those two teams. <laughs> but there, it's absolutely bizarre. unbelievable. Bit, Justin Herbert, keep your eye on him. He, he's, he's a burrow in the making. He, if he gets the pieces, just watch out. Yep. He's my guy. I really wanted to get a uh, Herbert jersey. I got to see that overtime game between the Chiefs and the, um, the, and Chiefs? the Chargers. Chiefs um, and Chargers? Yeah, that was like week 15 or something. No, no, I the, think I was the, there. The Raiders-Chargers game was the most unbelievable football game I've ever seen. Should have ended in a tie. No, it was one of the poorest. That, that, that coach should be excommunicated. But I think Herbert converted like four fourth down in 11s The or guy something. doesn't believe in, in punting or kicking field it's goals apparently. Well, and it's also like, oh yeah, they're signaling they're going to tie. Let's call a timeout. It was like, Really? It was unbelievable, and, and the fact that we we were robbed of a Justin Herbert playoff. Oh my gosh, yep. not right. But that's so. classic Chargers. That's what they do. Yeah. They blow it. But hey, we don't want to keep you too long, too. I know you're you're a busy man. Go um, Burrow. One more thing I want I want to know from you is national anthem. What about it? Are they going to televise it? They they have to, right? They're going to definitely televise it. Uh, I don't expect any knees at all. I don't, I, we haven't seen any prop bets about that. I don't think that's going to happen. <sighs> but the average time for a national anthem is around 155. Who's singing? Mickey Guyton. So uh, no country, country, country artist. Um, so it's only been completed, the national anthem, under 95 seconds twice in the last 15 years. But apparently, so this I haven't given much over under to this is topic, ninety seven point so. five seconds. Yeah, it, it, the thing about this this lady is that they so really she is oh well, yeah, people, oh they go crazy for it. And you probably said that degenerate gambler you talked oh, to. Oh yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> You'd probably be like, I'm I'm all in on this. But it's apparently, she's in. a speed singer. She has at major events, she's sung the national anthem twice, and in both times, she's done it in under ninety seconds. Like Alicia Keys when she sang uh, at the Super Bowl, hers was over two minutes. Like I, I don't know how you sing it in less than ninety seconds. I don't know. They did a two minute drill with her. I I, I, I think she's gonna go longer. It's a Super Bowl. Lean into it. So yeah, we'll see. Yeah, putting money on that. I love it. It's gonna be a lot of fun though. I, that's all I know. I think I'm glad that you're getting into football a little bit yeah, more. And then like, you know, it's just like you know, dabbling in it because it's okay. Dabble. Because yeah. it, it feels good to be able to like get excited about the Super Bowl, get excited about sports a little bit again. Obviously, there's. Still I'm not a lot there of... with the NBA yet. Oh yeah. No. I mean, I think that's gonna take a long time. Like if if ever, who knows. Yeah. So I love that the, the NFL has like done a little bit to get that wokeness out. It's obviously still there. We got to figure out a way to get that get that out. But I, I hope that you just focus on the game because last year there was a lot of nonsense in that pregame well, show. It was all about get... what's the color of the coaches, mm -hmm. what's the color and gender of the refs. I, I hope we don't hear that because this is a, it's a great matchup. I agree. That's all we nah, need to focus I'm, on. I'm telling you, the commercials are where they're really going to get you. I, bet, I am betting we're going to see at least five really woke commercials. I, I just over call under, it. Oh, yeah, over under, over under, you know, four and a half, five yeah, and a half. I think I'm you're right. I'm taking the over. They're also calling this a crypto bull. They're saying there's going to be a lot of cryptocurrency commercials. There's going to be a ton. I know New York Times came out with an article. I don't know how much I trust those at times, yeah. but at least from from what we're hearing, there's going to be a lot of crypto. Well, any commercial with Matt Damon immediately counts as a woke commercial too. Yeah, so exactly. that only helps my cause. <laughs> Future. Well, <laughs> the future. It would be nice if they had. If I see that commercial one more time. <laughs> Seriously. And throw a helmet through my screen. <laughs> As the Romans used to say, <laughs> line. <laughs> I got to go. All right, Charlie. Thanks here, so Charlie. much for joining us. All right, there you. we go. Charlie Kirk, ladies and gentlemen, thank right. you so much. Appreciate you. Oh, man. What a guy. Absolute legend. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I wouldn't mind watching the Super Bowl with Charlie at some point. Charlie, I'm coming over next year. <laughs> All right. I'm inviting myself over. Tell the wife. Um, and then also, too, we got... Uh, we have our producer back here. This is when you know you're doing a real live show here. Uh, he's yelling at me. He's doing all these. Uh, are, am I rounding third right now? Is that is that what we're doing? 
man on the street stuff. <laughs> I'm just, I'm just totally kidding. I give, I'm giving producer Angelo a hard time back there. It, it's great. Also, a huge shout out to everybody behind the scenes too. You guys are amazing. Anthony, Angelo, Dom, Josh, everybody that joined us. Something that's really fun too. We wanted to know not only what people on the set wanted to think about the Super Bowl, who's going to win, what's going down. We asked people around the office. Check out this video. Hey, yo, welcome to Turning Point USA HQ. We got to ask my coworkers what they think about the Super Bowl, who's going to win, and so much more. Let's go, let's go. Excuse me. All right, take those headphones off. It's uh, work time's over. Who's winning the Super Bowl? Uh, the Rams. Easily. Why? Uh, they're the better team. Cincinnati's young. What analysis. This Rams, is incredible. got the Rams big. All right, who's going to be the Super Bowl MVP? Ooh. Donald. Aaron Donald. Ooh, my goodness. Pittsburgh native. Wow, what a guy. Um, who's your team? Oh, Philadelphia Eagles. No birds, baby. Yikes. No birds. What do you think? Uh, what do you think about the commercials? Do you think they're going to be good? Um, I don't know. I paid more attention to the game, so yeah. I hope they're good. Big sports guy here. Thanks. Important things here. Who's going to win the Super Bowl? You're asking the wrong person about sports, man. Um, you know what? I will say. Which, which is the mascot that, like, in the wild? Too long. LA's going to win. Thanks, Marcus. Hey, guys, really important stuff right here. They're on a, they're on a call. Okay, Ram, Rams or Rams or Bengals? Bengals. Bengals, perfect. Good luck with the call. Oh, yeah, yeah, blah, blah, blah. Who's winning the Super Bowl? Oh, Bengals, dude. Shooter McPherson all day. It, that's not even a player. It, Shooter McPherson? It's yeah. Evan McPherson. It, it, no, it's Shooter now. This guy clearly doesn't know football at all. Who's going to be the Super Bowl MVP? Uh, Got to go Joey Burr. Joey Burr all day. Are you just making up guys' names? Because uh, I mean, because Shooter McPherson is not real. His Shooter name is Joey Burr. Then maybe you don't know football. His name is Joe Burrow. Joey Burr. Still doesn't understand what's going on here. What's the final score going to be? Uh, twenty-eight seventeen Bengals. I think it's going to be a blowout. Who's going to have the better commercial, Haynes or Doritos? Oh, Haynes. Yeah. Weird underwear guy here. Hey, ladies, 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 ladies. All right, Super Bowl, Super Bowl. Who's going to win? I literally have no clue. It's between L.A. and Cincinnati. L.A. L.A. or Cincinnati? Cincinnati. L.A. or Cincinnati? Bengals because of Joe Burrow go Louisiana. Oh, my gosh. Burrow. <laughs> here we go. Here we go. Kelsey. Kelsey. Enough work. Who's going to win the Super Bowl? Who's even in the Super Bowl this year? It's the Rams against the Bengals. My goodness. Oh. Um. Joey. Joey. Joey can't win. It's a team that wins, Kelsey. Uh, I choose the Rams. So if you're going to choose between uh, these two animals, the Rams and, and a Bengal tiger, who would you who would you say would win in the wild? Maybe the tiger. So you're going to go with the Bengals. I'm helping you out here. Sure, sure. Yeah, I'll do that. I'll do that. Miranda, Miranda, who's going to win the Super Bowl? Bengals with Joe Shiesty. Oh, Lily, who's going to win the Super Bowl? I don't know who's playing. It's the Rams and the Bengals. Uh, she said Bengals, so Bengals. Oh, my gosh. Just a follower here. Uh, Troy, who's going to win the Super Bowl? Bengals or Rams? Uh, Bengals is a tiger, right? Yes, sir. They'll eat the Rams. Oh, my gosh. Not just beat them. They're going to eat them. <laughs> who's winning the Super Bowl? Who's playing the Super Bowl? Oh, my gosh. You're done. Who's winning the Super Bowl? The Rams. <laughs> All right. The Rams. Who's winning the Super Bowl? Rams. Up. All right. Who's winning the Super Bowl? Snoop Dogg. I have time show actually is going to be kind of fuego. Right, here we go. Here we go. Who's winning the Super Bowl? Absolutely the Rams, for sure. Why absolutely? Because uh, California ties. Biola. You really like, oh, okay, I'm done. <laughs> Biola. Well, clearly the office is split. Nobody knows if it's going to be the Rams or the Bengals. We want to hear what you have to say. Who's going to win? Put it in the comments below. Thanks. All right, well, there, there you have it. That was... All right, spicy I, takes. For people that were wondering, I, I was w wearing women's sunglasses in that <laughs> in that reel that, that you just saw that that little video. I went upstairs and uh, Kira from the department that shall not be named uh, just said, "Hey, I got some of these glasses." I'm like, "You know, what? I'm gonna go for it." So roast me in the comments, do whatever you're gonna do, whatever. I think we need to get back to the national anthem. Over under, what what are you taking here? Because once again, the over under bookies.com projects 97.5 seconds. Yeah, look, I'm 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 actually going to take the under because she has a track record, and I do believe she will go longer than her regular track record. But you know, I'm a, I'm a stats guy. You know, I'm a data analytics person down to my core. So 
you know, she's coming at under 90 seconds twice. I think you, I, we're, we're, you're padding her seven seconds there. Give yeah, so a, so I'm going under. <laughs> so she sang the anthem in 86 seconds back at the 2021 National Memorial Day concert. Remember that? That, that was out at DC and everything. So, yeah. and that's that's a huge event too. Don't don't forget that. There's a lot. There's a lot of fanfare and everything. So, I'm gonna go under. I'm gonna go under 97. Ooh, we and actually have, agree on something. Yeah, we actually agree. A lot of the time we try not to, but uh, with you looking dapper like this, I'm like, all right, I'll be I'll be Team Brian one time. Come on. Is there any other crazy bets that are going on here too? Like anything that that we're really missing? Oh, man, uh, oh Gatorade. Oh, Gatorade yes. color. Something I know we didn't get to get into with, with Charlie or some other guests. So right now, plus 250 odds, according to bookies.com, it's going to be orange. Obviously, that's the Bengals color. But that's why I yeah. think here, uh, I'm just going to go blue just because I think the, the Rams are going to win. Yeah, over the last 10 years, uh, orange and blue have hit the most. And so I, I kind of have a kind of had a similar feeling on... It'll be the color of the team that that wins. So I'm taking orange because I believe in the Cincinnati Bengals, and I think those players will have the foresight to to go. Let's grab orange because that's our go Tigers, you know. Because I couldn't imagine them over there at the uh, Rams sideline, where it's just you got the uh, the team just like, all right, you know, let's put the orange powder in there. No, that's like bad juju. So I think the fact that it's uh, the favorite is is orange. Is I mean, it's still pretty good odds. I'm gonna put it on blue. Cash that out and then maybe get a nice blazer like you have on. I'll be able to afford one. <laughs> well, and purple's at like plus like 1100 or something like that, which I think is an absolute crime because grape, grape Gatorade's my favorite Gatorade. So, but it never, never happens. They never do purple. Another one too is like, I love some of the Super Bowl specials. They're like, great. So, so like Pat McAfee, he's had some amazing specials on FanDuel over this entire season. I know for us on Breakaway, we've given you the betting odds for stuff times where our parlays just did not hit times where people like Aaron Rodgers did not help us out whatsoever I had such a big parlay in that divisional round and it just missed it by one right just missed it by one I I feel like I'm the king of that at times but also I did put a little money down on the Bengals making it to the Super Bowl and winning so they, they find it I'm gonna get a nice little payday one thing I like I about the Super Bowl special though is uh, plus 100 Jamar Chase and Cooper Cup to combine for 200 plus receiving yards. Are they just giving out free money? Could be. I think with that one, what they believe is that Vegas is sitting there going, we think that Jalen Ramsey is going to contain uh, Jamar Chase a little bit. And like I said, I already believe that no, I think Jamar Chase at this stage of both of their careers, I think Jamar's got the edge. So I love that bet because it does feel like free money. Vegas is, is betting on on Jalen Ramsey getting the, the better of him, I don't think it's going to happen. Some more good ones, too. It's the first pass for Matt Stafford and Joe Burrow. If it's going to be complete, it's minus 225. Incomplete, plus 180. Well, um, I like complete for both of them because with both of those teams, what they like to do early on is the short, very, very quick passes. Um, now... I'm going incomplete for Joe Burrow. I think he's going to get pressured right off the bat. I think it's going to be one of those where it might have to be a scramble and a throwaway. But I think Zach Taylor's going to get a game plan for that. They know that that they're going to bring the house probably right off the gate. And so I'm expecting it to be like a little like three-yard turnaround quick to T. Higgins or Tyler Boyd, not to Jamar. Um, and that's why I'm going I'm going complete. What is that, plus 225? So right now Easy it's a plus Easy. 180 for incomplete or intercepted for Matt Stafford. And it's the same thing for... Joe Burrow. Okay, yeah. No, I'm, I, I, I actually am going to go complete on both of them. And I think now we get to this point where it's like, all right, who's going to be winning the football game? Like, who's going to be winning it, and what's the score going to be for me? I've said Rams. We've seen that throughout the entire show here. But I think it's going to be 27-24 Rams. Okay. Um, look, my belief is this. If you're going to beat the Bengals, you have to at least put up 30 points. At least, because Joe Burrow will find a way to, if, if you're only putting up exactly 21, 24 points, Joe Burrow will find a way to go and get in front of that score, beat that. So I believe, as I have been thoroughly convinced the Bengals all postseason were going to win the Super Bowl, 
35, no, 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 33, 33, 27 Bangels. Wow. And then I know we were talking about this yesterday. There's a thing called, I don't know if anyone's heard of Scorigami. Scorigami Great. is, I think it's scorigami.com. There's also, uh, they're, they're on Twitter. And right now I think it's minus 200 to have a score that's uh, never happened before. Minus or no, 200. Or no, it'd, plus, it'd plus, plus 200. Plus. I mean, plus 200 right now. So... It's pretty crazy. I've never yeah. heard of that before where it's like they actually give this whole breakdown of like what's the scores that's never happened before. Yeah, to get to a score agami, what you need is you need something really weird to happen. Okay, so uh, you're going to need either like a safety or you're going to need multiple two-point conversions. Something weird is going to happen. Now, like Charlie said just a minute ago, Super Bowls are always weird. So like if there's going to be a score agami, I would almost expect it more to be in a Super mm -hmm. Bowl than to be in a, just a regular regular game because yep. Super Bowls are weird. They break out trick plays. They do what they have to do to win. Um, however, I'm not betting on there being a score agami. I don't. I I, I would I bet no. So I don't think so either. I think it's going to be one of those where they're going to have trouble getting in the end zone at times. Like there's going to be some big plays. I th the I think the Bengals are going to give up some big plays. Absolutely. I think there's going to be times like if there was just a random prop bet for OBJ to have a touchdown, it's like over 35 yards, I'm cashing that in. Mm -hmm. I think he's he's one of the keys to the games if we start getting into that. Once again, too, it's just like I think obviously Aaron Donald, he's going to be leading that defense. I'm glad that they have Vaughn Miller there, too, because he's a Super Bowl MVP. He's going to tell them what this is like. Been there before. And he's going to help lead that defense. But I think he's given that leadership role definitely over to he's got more of a mentorship role Aaron Donald's got that leadership role uh, yeah. fully where it's like people are going to look to him I think he's going to be an absolute beast but once again this is coming down to Sean McVay mm -hmm. Sean McVay is 100% my key to this game for the Rams because he's got to know how to adapt yeah well um I, I completely agree uh Sean McVay got just embarrassed when he tried coaching against Bill Belichick in the Super Bowl and remember I, I, I'm a big believer of losses mean more to these competitors than wins. He is not going to show up unprepared again. And he he knows Zach Taylor. They know each other. They coach together for a little bit. Um, Zach Taylor was former quarterback's coach with the Rams uh, after Sean McVay was made head coach there. So they, they know each other. They're going to be playing off of each other's strengths and weaknesses. That's why I absolutely believe, you know, the, the teacher to the student probably is going to have the edge there. Um, so talking about free money though and talking about how these how they're aggressive uh joe burrow this is a this is a prop that i really like joe burrow or matt stafford to throw a 50 plus yard touchdown is at plus 200 with the way that these teams like to take moonshots i feel like that's a no-brainer to put some money on that right i just feel like it's got better odds that the rams are going to throw one over 50 yards than the Bengals will well and that's why it's great because and, it's 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 either or yeah so that's it why i think who does it that that's why I like this a lot mm -hmm. because it's coming back to it. Just look at look at the weapons that the Rams have, and like adding OBJ has been massive. That guy looks like the old OBJ. Yeah, it, it's amazing. And then your Cooper Cup, who is just named the Offensive Player of the Year in the NFL, is just doing record breaking stuff. And we and, haven't even mentioned Van Jefferson, who's got wheels on him. Do you think you know how uh, they're saying with his what it was dad's fantasy football group? They're not allowing him to get his son anymore. Oh, that's he can't, he can't draft him. I'm sure they're trying to do that now too. Like FanDuel, they're trying to figure out who Cooper Cup's like dad is. Like you're not allowed to put all these bets. <laughs> <laughs> like that's that's not allowed. But that's why I think you're gonna have someone like OBJ. It's gonna be able to um, find a find a streak, find a hole, something like that, and mm -hmm. he's gonna be able to break one off a little bit. Don't forget to Robert Woods. I think he was so influential for this Rams team. And obviously he got hurt. They've been missing him a lot. And for someone like him, he was the narrator for one of their hype videos That's this so last cool. week. And, you know, they're playing for him as well. I don't, is Higby still out? I believe Higby will still I be think out. Hig and then uh, Bland, is Uzoma coming Bland back came right in and looked, looked pretty good. So I'm Bland not sure good. about Higby. That could, that could be yeah. huge. He's a huge part of that, that offense as well. But I mean, they're going to be using the the running backs out of the backfield too. It's going to be it's going to be a fun game. I'm just excited, and I hope that there's a lot of just just football. That's that's all I want. I that's what I wanted in last year's Super Bowl because last year's Super Bowl that's what bummed me out. Like 
there might have to be a point where you mute the pregame show. If they yeah, get in, if they get into the a bunch of nonsense, because last year you think about it, it was Tom Brady, the goat. See what's going to happen there in their home stadium, playing against the guy that wants to be the next goat, mm -hmm. Patrick Mahomes. And there was not enough talk about that. So I'm glad that there seems to be a little bit more conversation about these two quarterbacks, two number one picks, two guys that are easily uh, people you can root for. So it's going to be a lot of fun. I'm going to eat a lot of food, probably have a couple adult beverages. I'm not going to cuss like Brock Belcher did when he just <laughs> jumped on this show. Uh, but I, I'm going to have a good time. I'm excited. Well, so I want to hear, what is your go-to Super Bowl like snack food? Like, what oh. do you have to have there? Dude, I slam chips and guac. I, I swear on my life, I eat an ungodly amount of chips. And that's what I do at restaurants too. You know, I, I hate when I go to those like Mexican restaurants and it's just like, man, I'm so hungry. I want like a fat burrito. And then I realized I just ate 13 bowls of chips before I even got it. And I'm Filling like, up on chips and all right, yeah, can I get a to-go box? Sir, you haven't even eaten your burrito. Yeah, thanks for the chips. Can I get a to-go box? Thanks. <laughs> so Man's I slam mess. chips and guac uh, quite a bit. And then I will have some Truly Lemonades. It will be a good time. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> Me, myself, I'm a wings man. You know, I need there to be some buffalo wings, maybe some barbecue wings, but I'm a little more of a spicy guy. So I need I need some wings. That's that's my absolute bar none must happen wings. Oh yeah. Well, it's going to be a great time. We appreciate you guys tuning in too. Brian, you look absolutely fantastic today. I'm glad that I got to borrow these sunglasses. Shout out to producer Braden from the TPUSA live team. Maybe if I win my bets, I'll be able to afford some <laughs> of these. We'll, we'll see. But it's been a great time. Thanks to everybody that joined us here on sets. Enjoy the Super Bowl. Go Rams, go Harambe, go team. Go Bengals. See you guys.